What are some reasons why your doctor might order an EKG? Well, an EKG is our way of sensing the electricity flowing through your heart. Now, you can see the results of the EKG either on a heart rhythm monitor where you get hooked up in the hospital and you see the little electrical lines, the little squiggly little lines that go boop, boop, boop. That's essentially what an EKG is. So an EKG is where we do that and actually record that on paper or a mobile type EKG or event monitor or Holter monitor would be where we are recording that, but you actually wear the device over a period of time. So this is all ways to sense the electricity inside the walls of your heart. As electricians, we want to know what's going on with your electricity. Because remember, your heart pumps or beats only in response to electricity. Your heart is a dumb muscle. It needs to be stimulated by a source of electricity for it to actually pump. Whether or not that source is your normal source of electricity that you're born with, located in the roof of your heart, or whether or not it's an abnormal source of electricity, like atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, or one of the other 15 different abnormal heart rhythms that we know about that come from all over your heart or different walls of your heart. And these abnormal sources of electricity, remember, the cells, they can do whatever they want. They have a mind of their own and they can sleep and do nothing, or they can randomly wake up, start to generate electricity, fight for control of your heart away from the normal source, actually override and take over control, and then make your heart speed up. And then they could randomly go back to sleep, but they're not gone, they're just back to sleep, and then they wake up again in the future. So you go in and out of these rhythms. Now, when we want to catch these rhythms to make a diagnosis, we need to actually put an EKG on and try to see the electricity and where it's coming from when you're having your symptoms in order to make a diagnosis. So when we put an EKG on, those of us with the proper training can actually localize which part of your heart or which wall of your heart the electricity is originating from just based on how the squiggly little lines look. So whether they're upright, inverted, fat, skinny, notched, takes years of training. So you have to realize that people interpret or read EKGs at different levels. So if you were a primary care doctor or an emergency room doctor, you may read it at one level. That's where you had four years of medical school and then three years of internal medicine residency or emergency room residency training. And you're going to interpret EKGs at a certain level. But then to be a cardiologist, you have to do three more years of specialized training to become a general cardiologist. And you're gonna read EKGs at a different level than those of us who specialize in the heart rhythm called cardiac electrophysiologist. We do an extra two years of specialty electrophysiology training. So we will read EKGs even better. And so when people are reading EKGs, just keep that in mind that everybody reads it at different levels. Sometimes I see patients where they go to see the primary care doctor or emergency room doctor, and these are good doctors, they're, they're good at what they do, but they aren't specialists, let alone electrical cardiologists. And sometimes they, they read it and they may say, oh, well, the patient's in atrial fibrillation. Now, sometimes they may think the patient's in atrial fibrillation. Also, sometimes as a crutch, the computer gives a little interpretation. At the top of the EKG, there's actually the computer's interpretation of what it thinks is going on. Well, the computer's not that smart and it's actually wrong up to 30% of the time. So sometimes you get an EKG, the computer says you're in atrial fibrillation, the primary care doctor says, hey, I think you're in atrial fibrillation. Then they send you on to a specialist and we interpret it and say, actually, the good news is you're not in atrial fibrillation. You're in normal rhythm. It's just a little bit irregular or you're in an abnormal rhythm, but it's one of the other 15, not specific to atrial fibrillation. So it is very important to make the right diagnosis. But why might a doctor even put an EKG on you? Well, if you're having any symptoms that they think might be related to a heart rhythm abnormality, then they're going to try to catch it with an EKG or an extended wear heart rhythm monitor called an event monitor or a Holter monitor because you wanna to try to catch the rhythm. If somebody is having an abnormal rhythm problem that's causing symptoms, then every time they have that abnormal rhythm problem, they should have those symptoms. So you really want to correlate it. So you have to wear the monitor long enough to actually catch it. So different things that you might want to catch, different symptoms that are caused by abnormal rhythm problems would be things like chest pain, Chest pain, especially from a blocked heart artery, that's a plumbing problem. That's a blocked heart artery problem. That's not specifically a heart rhythm problem. But you can oftentimes see evidence of blocked heart arteries through changes on the EKG. The analogy would be if you say the electrical system in this room is completely separate from the plumbing system in this room, well, they're very separate. What turns on the light has nothing to do with whether the pipes in the walls are blocked and the sink is backed up. But if you back up the sink and some of the pipes burst and you have some 
water in the walls, it might inadvertently disrupt the electrical system and cause some changes. Same kind of thing with the heart. If you have electricity flowing through the heart that's telling it what speed to beat at, but you have damage to that heart wall because of blocked plumbing issues and you're having a heart attack, it is going to make those electrical signals appear differently. And so therefore, when you read an EKG, one thing that it can be used for is to help you diagnose block plumbing issues. That's not its primary purpose, and there are other ways of dealing with that, but it's the first screening tool. I would say that the little computer interpretation of the EKG tends to overcall possible changes due to block plumbing or heart attacks, but it undercalls or is wrong a lot when it talks about which specific rhythm you're dealing with. So chest pain, possibly from a blocked heart artery or heart attacks, could show changes on your EKG. If you are feeling palpitations, where you feel like your heart rate's racing or it's very irregular, that could be one of the 15 different abnormal rhythms that makes your heart go fast. It could be premature beats that make your heart irregular. These are all heart rhythm abnormalities and you would want to catch that on an EKG or extended heart rhythm monitor to make the diagnosis. Sometimes people are feeling short of breath or tired. A common cause of that is slow heart rate problems. If your normal rhythm source was getting old and malfunctioning and was starting to go very slow, it can make you feel very tired or very short of breath. Now there are plenty of other causes for that, but this is certainly one cause that can be treated. And so an EKG might be used to try to diagnose that. And of course, if you do really have a primary problem with slow heart rates, then a pacemaker, a simple device that goes underneath the skin with little electrical spaghetti-like wires going to your heart can treat that because those devices take over for slow heart rates. They don't take over for fast heart rates. That's why they are not direct treatments for atrial fibrillation or other fast arrhythmias, but they do treat slow heart rate problems. And then oftentimes people get EKGs or heart rhythm monitors to evaluate lightheadedness or passing out. There are multiple causes of lightheadedness or passing out, but one of those could either be a very slow heart rate problem, which a pacemaker could treat and completely correct. There are also some dangerous heart rhythms out of the 15, much more dangerous than atrial fibrillation. Rhythms that when they take over control of your heart, they can make your heart speed up to life-threatening speeds of three to 400 beats per minute, where you really are not effectively pumping blood to your brain and your heart is just quivering or vibrating, it's going so fast and it really doesn't have time to fill up, pump, fill up, pump. And so it's not really pushing blood anymore or pumping it, so you're not getting blood through your brain. And that's what you see on TV where people just pass out or collapse and you have to shock them with the defibrillator paddles to shock that dangerous rhythm back to sleep. If you were starting to develop issues like that, you could be passing out and that would be the most dangerous cause of it. And you would then get a defibrillator device, a little device like an oversized pacemaker placed by those of us who specialize in this area that can monitor your heart from the inside and shock you like somebody putting paddles to get you out of the dangerous rhythm and save your life if that were to occur. Also evaluations for lightheadedness or passing out that involve the heart rhythm. And so therefore that could also be used for that. And then lastly, sometimes we know what the person's heart rhythm problem is. We know that they have atrial fibrillation. We know that they have certain other abnormal rhythms and we just want to monitor it over time, especially atrial fibrillation, which can progress over time. And we want to know how often you're going into it and what kinds of speeds and what kinds of symptoms it's causing. And so sometimes we may put heart rhythm monitors on you, like a little loop recorder placed underneath the skin or extended monitors over periods of time to get a sense of how your underlying abnormal rhythm like atrial fibrillation is progressing or what's the current status. So these would be all the different ways that we might use an EKG or an extended heart rhythm monitor to monitor your heart rhythm or to make a diagnosis.